In the early 60s, Seymour Benzer demonstrated that the gene is made of smaller particles, each of which can be modified and mapped. He did this with culture media, petri dishes, two bacterial strains, and a bacteriophage called T4. His work was based on phage recombination, which happens as follows. If the red and blue phages are used to co-infect E. coli, they will replicate inside the host cell. The phage genomes can recombine through the formation of crossing overs, whose exact nature is not discussed here, but entails breaking and rejoining the genomes to form recombinant DNA molecules, red and blue here, that are then packaged in phage particles. To understand recombination, we first must understand gene complementation. Consider two genes, A and B, which express subunits of a hypothetical complex necessary for the phage to form a clear plaque that is to efficiently kill host cells. If a mutant lacks protein B, absence of the AB complex prevents efficient killing leading to a cloudy plaque, that is where some bacteria are still alive. The same is true for a mutant lacking protein A. If these two mutants co-infect the same cell, both A and B proteins are produced, resulting in the clear plaque phenotype. This process is called complementation and demonstrates that mutant 1 and mutant 2 affect different genes. The complementation test can be used to assign any new mutant to a gene. For example, a new cloudy mutant that fails to complement mutant 1 is said to be in the same complementation group, that is, it affects the same gene. How would one look for a combination? First, two mutant phages are used to co-infect the host bacterium. After host lysis, the new phage particles are diluted and plated on a bacterial lawn where they form plaques. Each plaque is a clonal event resulting from a single infected bacterial cell. Cloudy plaques will be the majority. They are caused by the parental phages or by the very rare double mutant recombinant. Clear plaques will be also very rare. They are caused by a wild type phage formed by a crossing over that joined the good A and the good B alleles. It is important to note the effect of phage concentration on this analysis. If we incubate a concentrated suspension of mutant phage 1 and 2 with host cells, this is called infecting at high multiplicity. Many cells are infected by both mutants, resulting in complementation. If we dilute the phages and infect bacteria, most cells are infected by a single phage and the single cloudy phenotype is manifest. Seymour Benzer demonstrated intragenic recombination working on the R2 locus of bacteriophage T4. We know now that the R2 locus encodes two proteins, A and B, which are necessary for growth of T4 on E. coli strain K. Mutants at either B or A are capable of growing on E. coli strain B, but not on K. If Benzer mixed A and B mutant phages and infected E. coli at high multiplicity, complementation was manifested by growth on E. coli K. By contrast, when Benzer mixed two different A mutants and infected E. coli at high multiplicity, he observed growth on E. coli B, but not on K. Among the progeny phages, he obtained rare recombinants that grew on E. coli K. This means that during growth of the two strains in the permissive host, E. coli B, the two mutants recombined. A crossing over between the two mutant sites in gene A produced a wild type phage. This meant that mutants in the same functional unit could recombine. Empowered by this discovery, Benzer isolated many R2 mutants, classified them as A or B by the complementation test, and mapped those within a gene. The principle was simple. Distant mutations provided more space in which crossing over could occur and had higher chance of recombination. Close mutations provided less space and had lower chance of recombination. The mapping method entailed co-infection of E. coli B, harvest of progeny phages, and then plating these both on E. coli B and on E. coli K. By counting plaques on E. coli B, 
the total number of infectious phages was obtained. By counting plaques on E. coli K, the number of recombinants that had regained gene function could be counted. Using the counts of plaque forming units on the two different bacteria, a recombination frequency could be derived and used to make a map. In the example table, distant mutations yield more recombinants than close mutations. Benzer studied hundreds of independent mutants, but the complementation test, he grouped them in the A and B gene units that make up the R2 locus. He demonstrated that recombination can take place within the gene. He placed the mutations in a linear array along the gene. He actually found that some sites are hotspots for mutations. In conclusion, the gene is not an undivisible unit, but it is made of smaller units that can be individually modified. These days, we take this principle for granted, but it was Benzer's work at a time when the relation between DNA and genes was not clear that first cast light on the nature of Mendel's unit of inheritance.